Greetings. This is Dr. Terry A. Webb of the Counseling Department at Kyle Cole Community College Metropolitan Campus. And I'm here today to talk to you about anxiety. I want you to understand something too, that anxiety is actually a very real occurrence in the lives of people. Anxiety is not uncommon to everyone. Everyone at some time in their life has been anxious or nervous about something. Nervousness and anxiety are part of the human experience. And anxiety in general is an unpleasant feeling of apprehension. You feel restless and you may have physical reactions such as a headache, sweating, palpitations, chest tightness, and even an upset stomach. When anxiety is normal, it goes away. When it's not normal, anxiety has a tendency to not dissipate or leave so readily. Conversely, every human can relate to these symptoms because everyone has experienced anxiety at one time or another. Anxiety is just part of the general human experience. In fact, it can be a potentially beneficial experience in anticipation of certain dangerous situations. It protects us from doing things that potentially could be placing us in great peril. The physical symptoms of anxiety are coming from an autonomic nervous system response. It is different but related to the fear or flight response that many of us have, that we all have. Fear is a natural reaction to a clear and present danger. Anxiety is your body anticipating the potential danger or discomfort, whether physical or emotional. There is an infinite number of human experiences that can cause normal anxiety. Life offers us the experience of many anxiety-provoking firsts, such as a first date. A first date can bring a lot of anxiety, especially if it was a blind date. The first day of school, especially if it's a transfer and you've never been there before. The first time you ever were away from home can bring a lot of anxiety and fear, for you may not know anyone or anything. As we journey through life, there are many important life events, both good and bad that cause varying amounts of anxiety. These events can include things such as taking a test, can produce a lot of anxiety if not managed. Getting married produces anxiety. Having children, becoming a parent produces anxiety. Getting divorced produces anxiety. Dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic produces anxiety. Changing jobs produces anxiety. Losing a job produces anxiety. Dealing with someone who is sick produces anxiety. So anxiety comes at us from all different facets of life. And we must learn to deal with anxiety before it deals with us. The discomfort that anxiety brings is considered normal a lot of times as well as beneficial. We must be cautious to not always try to make everything disease oriented just because it is a problem. You can feel anxiety when you walk down a dark street. You know, in those movies where it seems that nobody else is out on a major street but you and you hear footsteps? Anxiety could be anywhere. While it's pretty clear that it's normal and beneficial, we must learn to manage it because anxiety can become problematic for us if it's not managed correctly. And since anxiety is a, a normal part of life, you might feel anxious when you're faced with problems or before making important decisions. Anxiety involves more than temporary worry or fear. For a person with an anxiety disorder, however, the anxiety does not go away and it can get worse over time. And there's several types of anxiety and anxiety disorders, including generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder, and various phobia disorder. A various phobia disorder would be someone who's afraid of snakes or spiders or mice or taxes or eating something that looks disgusting to them. But in real life, anxiety can cause significant problems in areas of their life, such as social interactions. People have trouble getting along with other people. It interferes with you participating in school. It interferes with you participating in work. It interferes with your relationships because you feel restless, wound up, on edge. You can be fatigued. You have trouble concentrating. Your mind can go blank. 
Sometimes you feel like you're going crazy and you just try to avoid being around other people. The physical symptoms of anxiety include being irritable, having muscle tension, you know, your body's so tight. You just worry all the time and it can even impact you sleeping. You have trouble sleeping. You have trouble falling asleep. You have trouble staying asleep. Sometimes you may not even sleep at all. But I'm here to tell you that there is a way to manage anxiety. Take time out. Practice yoga. Listen to music. Meditate on something. Get a massage. Learn relaxation techniques. Deep breathing is a good one. Step back from your problems sometime and realize that you cannot fix everything. You cannot control everything. And diet is another one that really can help you with anxiety. If you're eating a healthy, well-balanced meal and you're consuming the right amount of hydration, you will boost your energy and your capability to deal with the stresses of life that aren't ever all going to weigh. This could be a big one, this next one to manage it, when we limit our alcohol and caffeine intake. When we limit those things, we really improve our chances of managing anxiety because alcohol and caffeine can aggravate anxiety and trigger panic attacks. And we need to try to make it a point to get enough sleep. Some ways to get enough sleep would be that we manage how we sleep. That means no TVs in the room, and the room is set up for you to, your body gets accustomed to going to sleep when you're in there. And for some people, this could be difficult, because growing up, I had four brothers in my room with me, and it was very hard. And if you just imagine it, but you get through it. And one thing you can always do, even sitting at your desk, or on a bus, or don't do it in a car driving, is that you can close your eyes and take deep breaths. Take it in. Hold it for about 10 seconds if you can. Then let it go and do this 10 to 20 times. And if you do this and dig all of the air out of you and relax and let it go, you'll be surprised at how it can tend to center you. But before you do this, I need to give you a disclaimer. If you have any respiratory issue that will prohibit you from participating in deep breathing exercises, then do not do any until you have consulted with a medical professional. And also, exercise is an excellent way to help you manage anxiety. And exercise should be something that you enjoy doing. For instance, in my case, someone told me to run. I laughed. I can't run. I'm too old. It hurts bad. So I find things I like to do. I take short walks. I bowl. I golf. You have to find out what works for you. I love doing yard work, building things, cutting grass. Find something that works for you and do it regularly. And be willing to accept you can't control everything. I'm saying that again because that produces anxiety in a tremendous amount of people. And another thing is welcome humor. A good laugh goes a long way. You feel so much better when you have a really raucous laugh going on. But I have to give these warnings. This laugh should not be belittling, berating, or putting anyone down for any preference or any desire, or they are. One thing that I do to laugh is that I like to watch comedy. Comedy is hilarious, listening to people talk about their lives and the things that they've been through in life. And I even sometimes when I reflect back over my own life and watching the children grow up and other things, I'm compelled to laugh because we made it and we don't know how. And another thing that we can all do is maintain a positive attitude. Make every effort to replace every negative thought that you have that comes to life in your mind with something that's positive. Because if you're still here and you still have goals and dreams. We must manage what has happened that we don't agree with. And we must learn to let go of those things we cannot change. And we must learn to understand that we cannot control everything and we sure can't control everybody. And we need to try to think positive thoughts at all times. And another way to help us move on with managing anxiety is to get involved. Helping someone 
working with the little kid to read a fairy tale, helping them out working with the senior. These are just examples. You find what works for you. Get involved in your community. Get involved in whatever organizations, it's a school, whatever you can. In this virtual environment, there's really no limit to what you can be involved in because we now have transcended the probability and the possibility of not being able to talk to someone in another country. So anything is possible now. And another thing that we need to understand is what causes us to feel anxious. I remember one time in private practice, I had a young man that I had to treat that had to deal with. He didn't want to go outside, but he wanted to go outside and play basketball with his friends, but he couldn't because he was horrified of bumblebees. Well, in due time, I got him to move past that fear. and He's grown up now and he's gone on about his business. We need to find out what causes us anxiety, what causes us stress. And, when you fi and to find this out and you don't know how, talk to a counselor at the school. Talk to a counselor in your community. Talk to someone who's willing to sit down with you and, and go through these exercises and teach and, and how teach you how to manage and cope with your anxieties. Talking to people is always a good one, especially if it's someone in the field of mental health that is there to help and guide you towards recovery, maintenance, or total defeat of what may be causing you anxiousness. And understand that there's always resources available available to you in our community to help you deal with what may ever come up to you. And many of them are 24-hour resources. And if you don't know, just ask. You can always contact us in the counseling office at Tri-C between 8.30 and 5 at 216-245-2321. When we're back on campus again at 216-987-30, I'm 987-4900 or 987-3065, feel free to contact us and never, ever feel that you are alone. We're here for you and we have been where you are. Many of us have overcome anxiety to get through college because going through college produces anxiety because we're learning things we may not know. We're doing things that we've never done before. And let's be real. Who writes a 10-page paper with references and notes and an outline and rough drafts for fun? No one really does things like that in the real world. And understand this, that you are worthy of great things and you deserve the best life that you can have and there are resources available and we are here to assist you in any way that we can. We may not know everything, but hopefully we can link you up with somebody who does know what it is that you need to know.